Alright, welcome everyone to another Facebook Live demo from Woodcraft Spokane. I'm Fast Eddie, and like Steve Harvey says, we got another good one for you today. So let's get started. So you know guys, since I was a teenager, I've had the nickname Fast Eddie. I drove everything from Camaros, Corvettes, Mustangs. If it was fast, I probably owned one. In fact, I still drive a Camaro today. I just slowed down a little bit. But what I don't want to have to do is change my nickname to Fingerless Eddie or Eddie the Stump. You know, Eddie the Stump is kind of a cool name. I'll stick with Fast Eddie. So when it comes to working in my shop, safety is my top concern. And a shout out to my buddy Joel. He's on camera today. He did come up with those creative nicknames, Fingerless Eddie and Eddie the Stump, which is, I do kind of like that one, but we'll move on. So what we got for you today, we got two great safety items from Jessam. These are the Jessam Clear Cut Precision Stock Guides for routers and table saws. And we're going to talk about them both today. So um, Joe, I want to zoom in a little bit here. We got the router ones. These stock guides, they're the extreme feather featherboard upgrade and they actually perform the actions of two featherboards at one time. They apply a downward pressure holding your material to your table top, as well as an inward pressure towards the router fence, which keeps your material tied up against there. Uh, these guides mount to a standard quarter inch T-track on most of your commercial fences come with those. And Justin does offer a kit that would allow you to attach these stock guides to any of your own custom made uh, router fences that you may have. The traction tires, they're mounted on a five degree angle, and that's what pulls the material back tight against the fence here. There's actually a little tapered angle on here. We're gonna show those here in just a minute. Um, they're molded out of a grip force urethane, and they have a one-way needle bearing. This prevents kickback, and it provides for long life and a superior grip. They're CNC'd from a 6,000 series aluminum, and they're anodized for a great appearance and durability. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of demonstrate. So when you purchase, and I'll zoom back out a little bit there, but when you purchase the item, you're going to get three items here. You're going to get a left and a right um, on these guys. And there is actually a left and a right. So you want to pay attention to the direction arrows on these, as well as a quarter inch hex key uh, to tighten them down. Installation couldn't be any simpler. You're going to just grab it, loosen them up just a little bit. They've got a T-track slot. Uh, on the back there, so we're just going to go ahead and slide one on there, slide the second one on, slide right over into place, and just give it a little bit of tension here just to hold it, grab the other one, and come over to this side over here, slide that guy on here. You have just completed the installation of your Jessam router table stock guides. Now, the way they work is these urethane gripping balls only turn one direction. So you can see they spin in the rotation of the feed, but they don't spin backwards. So setup couldn't be any easier. You're gonna take your material. I've got a piece of about three quarter inch stock here. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna lift these guys up and I just put just a slight bit of pressure on them to get them up out of my way. I'm gonna put my material I got my uh, router bit down, I'm gonna set my material. I'm gonna use the back one to tighten down against the fence. The second one is going to provide your tension there. If you're doing quick changes, you can simply use that. However, if you're gonna do a lot of production work, you can use a quarter key and give that guy just, whoops, a little extra snug there. One of the great things is, I know we always like to lose these keys and stuff. If you have a router table lift, your lift key is actually exactly the same, and that's if you have a Craig or a Jessam or any of the other commercially made router lifts. So let's go ahead and go back here again. We're going to drop this side down, slight pressure, tighten up the back, tighten up the front. At this point, the piece will not go backwards. It will only slide forward just like that. So now what's going to happen, we're going to watch this. We're going to slowly start to feed this. And I'm going to really exaggerate this. I'm going to start a good three eighths to a half of an inch out here. And I'm going to slowly start pushing on this. And you're going to see it's going to actually draw it right in tight against the fence, holding it tight against the fence all the way through until it comes out the other side. Um, so 
What that allows is it's going to keep your material tight to the blade, giving you a nice clean cut on that side. And at the same time, it's going to prevent your kickback from coming back this direction if your router bit was to catch. If you were to get into a predicament or a spot you needed to stop, you could actually stop your router here, pull it out this way, and then you can go on to do any checks or anything you have to do, and then just simply reinsert it, feed it back tight against the rail, let it slide on through. Um, super simple, super great, but man, the safety that they add to this is great. Um, I love them. These are actually my personal stock guys from home. I brought them in and I love them. I use them daily. Uh, any questions, Joel? What kind of stock thickness will it handle? So the stock thickness, uh, it'll start really thin. I think the maximum, let me grab on this one here. Uh, so on the routers, those guys, they go to a maximum thickness of, uh, they got a two and three quarter inch total adjustment on them. And they'll actually use a thickness to 9 sixteenths of an inch below the center of the T-slots. Uh, other than that, uh, any other questions there, Joel? Um, I got a couple more. Um, what, what can these guides do that the feather boards can? Uh, that's a great question. And that's actually one of my favorite things and when I'm using these. This piece is a little thin to be running this way. But let's just say that our material was running this direction. We'll say this is a bunch of end grain on this side over here. And I got a cutting board and I want to do a groove or an edge out here. Well, obviously a feather board can't hold that whole piece in tight to do that end grain. These would do that. So now I've got my inward pressure from the ball or from the roller. I got my downward pressure and I can keep that end grain nice and tight there. Obviously with an end grain, I would want to have a piece of material behind here to prevent any tear out on the back side. And I would push my material all the way through, including the other piece there, giving me a super nice clean cut on my end grain. Fantastic. Excuse me? I said fantastic. Oh, perfect. So um, if we don't get any other questions on the router, we're going to move over to the table saw now. So slide it over here a little bit. Okay, so now these are the Jessam Precision Clear Cut Stock Guys for Table Saws. These are a little more complex, but man, they sure add safety. You know, we all know how dangerous table saws can be. And you know, when it comes to shop safety, the saw stop is obviously my number one safety feature. But to take that to the next level, I rely on the Jessam Stock Guides. And what they do is they keep my eyes on the cut where it needs to be so I can stay focused. Um, in my opinion, one of the number one reasons people get their finger caught on the blade is they're looking over here. We're always trying to keep that material tight against the fence. And by watching that, we're not watching and tend to get that left finger likes to get in the way there. Um, I've actually had some personal family members who have actually done that very thing. Uh, with the stock guide on, that would eliminate that. Now these do act a little differently. They do still have the same grip force urethane uh, roller tracks here. They anodized uh, CNC 6000 series aluminum on them. That all works the same. However, these are more of a permanent installation mount for the track. Uh, so it works on most of your commercial style tracks like this and you mount the guide track in here there's actually two four six eight screws that screw this down to your fence and that's a you know so it is a permanent install on that portion there that is the most complex part of it is those six screws screwing into your fence there once that's done it's as simple as loosening up your guides here sliding them into the track get the back one lined up That guy's on. We're gonna grab our next guy here. We'll loosen him up a little bit. Again, this is my fence from my house and my shop. Um, I brought it in so we could check it out today. I'm a firm believer in the quality of these items as well as the safety of these items. So, for adjusting these, 
The most important thing is we want to stay away from the blade, of course, and Justin does recommend two inches um, away from the blade when using these. Uh, so we can just go ahead and lift these guys up a little bit. So the first thing I do is I keep my blade all the way down, roll the fence over here, go ahead and loosen this up. Make sure I've got clearance where I'm going to not get any interference from the blade. Then take and roll my blade up really quick. Make sure I've got all the clearance there. I'm good to go. All right, so once we've got that there, we can go ahead and grab a piece of material here. And, oh, excuse me. So the first thing, so we're going to tighten these down super easy, just like this. Tighten front and back on both of them. There's that one. There's that one. That's your installation. These are now actually installed and we're good to go. So again, still a simple installation, just requires a little drilling and inserting those screws over here. These ones work a little differently when you're setting the tension on. They actually have a spring base inside the mechanism here. So to set them is actually really easy though. We're just gonna drop the metal edge, not the roller ball, but the metal edge of both wheels. Oops on the wood. I'm not going to apply any extra pressure, simply drop them on there. I'm just going to tighten it down. That's all I have to do. Now, because of the spring tension guides here, when I roll this underneath this fence, whoops, lock the fence down, it's going to slide through here, locked in. It's not going anywhere. I can come out. Again, if there was a position you needed to stop the saw, you could do it here, hit stop, slide it out from the side after lowering your blade of course and figure out what was going wrong with your cut um, obviously we have the safety guard off uh, just for a visual demonstration here but we still do have the riving knife I never make any cut of any kind without using a riving knife so we got that guy on there um, okay so uh, we got that all set we got that adjusted there so let's go ahead and um, let's do a sample cut here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some material over here. I got a really nice, yeah, nice long piece of wood here. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop our saw blade back down again. I'm going to slide my material over. I'm going to loosen up my stops. Okay, make sure everything's now nice and tight. Tighten them down. Tighten it down. Uh, some safety glasses here real quick. Sorry guys. Alright, because we all know safety comes first. Alright, so now we've got our material set. I'll give you a quick exaggerated before I actually make a cut. I'm going to keep that nice and far away and you can see as I pull that pulls in nice and tight and all the way through holds it. Again, you gotta lock the fence so it doesn't work that good. So, let's go ahead and we're gonna make a cut. I'll go with about, that's a good cut right there. So, got my push stick handy right here. All right, it's gonna get a little noisy. We'll turn it on. Oops, actually, you're set my blade height. All right, there we go. And I'll wait for it to do its safety startup. Uh, while that's going right there, uh, anything else you wanted to cover? I think that's about it. If there's any questions, please type okay. them in the comment section so that. Uh, we can get those over to Ed and get those uh, All right. answered as soon as possible. So here we go. I'm going to fire up. that quick and easy. I'll lower that blade down a little bit. This is ex 
especially nice at home. I break down my own sheet goods. So I buy an eight foot piece of four foot by eight foot uh, plywood and I want to rip it down. Sometimes I'll get the styrofoam out and lay it on the ground and do those cuts, but it's really nice with this. When I've got a piece and it's eight foot long, it's like two feet wide and I want to rip it into strips, I can actually do it myself because the wheels are going to hold it down towards the fence and with slight pressure I can feed that whole eight foot piece through. So let me move this here out of the way. Uh, any questions we got out there in Facebook world? Uh, do they interfere with safety guards? Absolutely safety guards. not. That's one of the great features about them. In fact, it's super easy. Uh, well, when you get your guide out of the way, and pull this stuff out here. Just go ahead and we'll pull it. Driving on. Set the wheel on. Lock it down. We'll have Joe plug us. Well, we don't need to plug it back in because we're not going to fire it up again. But we can now insert our plug over here. And obviously, you always want to make sure you have your saw unplugged and powered off safety key out while you're doing these adjustments of blade. I now have my safety gear in. I can move this up to that distance. Right there, which is going to be right in that two, uh, two and a half inch recommended guide distance anyway. Um, and actually, I could even run these a little closer to the rail here, which will actually even make me make. Right now, I'm making about a two, about a two and three quarter inch cut, and I've got all my safety gear and stuff. So yes, if you're doing thin cut, you would, you know, you would have to. Go ahead and remove the safety guard uh, for those thin cuts. Uh, as far as anything else, it's not going to be an issue. Here's one of the best parts of the whole thing. When you're not using it, it doesn't go into a pile of clutter. You simply loosen up your guys here, push them up over drop, up over drop. These are now completely out of the way. No interference, they can stay there all the time. If you want them off, they're super simple. Loosen them up, slide them right off the back end and put them in your drawer with your other accessories. I just like to keep mine up and out of the way. That way it reminds me to use them. We all tend to find that when we take something off, we don't put it back on as quick. So by having them here, they're super easy. Uh, another question out there. Yeah, Dwayne asks, will these fit on a rigid table saw? So on the rigid table saw, I don't know specifically what I can tell you is if it has a flat mount that is more than two inches thick, then this track will mount to the top of it. If it's got a bevel mount on the top of the fence, then it's probably not. But if you've got a square flat fence and if it's a cabinet saw, it should fit on there. But um, we can check the specs on that online. But the biggest requirement is two inches thick with a flat surface because that's what the T-Track is going to mount to. And that's the only requirement for the fence itself. Any other questions out there? Uh, none at this time. All right. Well, um, you know, like I said, these are my go-to safety items after the saw stop. I can't stress enough how much I believe in this product. I own these products and I know that they make my shop safer, which makes me more confident in what I'm doing. And stay safe out there, Facebook. We love you guys. Come see us at Woodcraft in Spokane. We'd love to visit with you, talk about what you're working on. Before we let them go, uh -huh. could you give me the numbers, uh, the product numbers? Absolutely. For, so for both of the products. So on the Jessam Clear Cut Precision Stock Guys for the router table, 158903. That's 158903. And we got those in stock right now, ready to sell. And then over here, we've got the Jessam Precision Clear Cut Stock Guys for the table saw. And the stock number on those guys is 159902. Again, that's 159902. Come on down, check us out. 
All right. Thank you, Facebook, for tuning in today. And uh, stay tuned for more great videos coming up.